Hello, my name is David Grossman. I am the past president of ECOD, the International Council of Design, and I'm very happy to be with you today. Design is a very complicated term to define um, because it means different things to different people. Um, not only does it mean different things to different people, but when design is translated into different languages, it means sometimes completely different things. When uh, design, the term for design in Chinese, for example, and that's a billion and a half people, means something very different from the term design um, that is used in some other countries. So when we use the term design, different people are hearing different things. Now, this is made even more complicated because design is both a noun and a verb. And that's very confusing. So design is a very popular word. It's used by many people, sometimes indiscriminately. So um, it's a very complicated um, problem that we professional designers have when we use it um, with audiences that may understand it differently. Now, um, I think it's very important to differentiate between designs with an S, the objects that are designed by designers and designing the verb, the process through which we design. Um, they're, they're completely different concepts, but because of the misuse of the word, many people don't understand the implications. For example, um, many times when a designer is asked what it is that he does or she does, they will be a little bit lazy and they will show pictures of their designs. And that is not what they do. The, the designs are simply snapshots in time of the end result of designing, of a design process. And all we have to offer is designing, not our past designs because they're no longer relevant. Now the designing process is completely invisible. It's abstract and people don't understand it. So they think that we're very talented people who by magic create these very beautiful items, these designs, without appreciating the abstract invisible designing process, which is all that we have to offer and which is really what we have to pay attention to. It's as if you ask a lawyer what it is you do, and the lawyer will show you a pile of paper. But that's not what a lawyer does. People know that lawyers are highly educated and experienced people who understand the process of understanding the law and applying the law, which is an abstract process. So um, design really means different things for different people. And I really suggest that every designer and every design student have their own personal definition of what designing is. My, my uh, definition is the application of intent. I think that's what designing is. Um, now, there's another aspect to this that I think is very important. Um, we, we are too much involved in today and what happens now and tomorrow and yesterday. We think that we are at the absolute tip of progress and historical development. And too often design and designing is seen in terms of what is considered to be modern, which is basically the past 200 years of consumption uh, since the Industrial Revolution so-called broke out in the UK. 
So we, we, our discussion about design and designing is within a very, very small um, frame of 200 primarily Western experience. And, and I think that is, that's not so. Um, I think that designing, in fact, started 250,000 years ago with Homo sapiens. Uh, there have been humanoids around for two and a half million years, and they even, at a certain stage, began to develop tools and objects. But only Homo sapiens developed the cognitive capacity and the physiological ability to actually impact their environments and and impacting the environment the the at, at, in their time it was basically the material and physical environment in that they created tools later pottery um, they created clothing they created places where they lived but they did so more than any other species were, were, were able to accomplish to the extent that not only could they survive, but they really gained a certain control over the environment. And I think this is a very important concept because it is the ability that humans have to impact the environment which separates them from other species. Now, a long time ago, 250,000 years ago, um, they were doing this in order to survive because they were food for other predators and they had to protect themselves. 40,000 years ago, there was something called the Little Ice Age. And in order to survive, humans created clothing out of, out of skins that enabled them to survive the, the climate. Climate change is not something that is new. And later on, humans uh, created textiles and weaving, and they created all sorts of different specialized tools and utensils and, and all sorts of things that made them able to survive and eventually made them the dominant species on this planet. And those designs, those, those applications of intent, in fact, is human history. And out of that came economics and trade and um, the development of nation states and imperialism and everything we see today. Um, in time, the use of energy uh, became more organized and um, we, we know it in modern terms, in terms of technology and industrialization. But the truth is that the first appearance of technologies came in prehistory and the first occurrence of industrialization, orderly production of, in a serial manner uh, by specialized workers, of objects happened thousands of years ago. The roots of industrialization are, are not in 19th century uh, Great Britain. Um, the roots are in many places, in many continents, um, in China, in, in South America, long before they became more apparent in Europe. So, um, Design to me is something that is, first of all, as I say, the application of intent, and it is a human attribute. It is universal. Wherever there are humans, there is designing. Um, so it is not no, only a national uh, cultural activity. It is certainly not Western, if anything, since all Homo sapiens come from Africa um, before they became distributed around the globe, if anything, design is, is African. But it's not. It, it's human. Wherever humans are on this planet, there is design and designing going on. 
So I see design as a uh, something that is very much human and very important and a great responsibility. ECOD is the International Council of Design. Um, it was established about 60 years ago in London. In the beginning, um, it was known as Ecograda and dealt with graphic design and was mostly Western European. But as the decades went by, um, it was understood that it was better to represent professional designers in a multidisciplinary way. And uh, we became the International Council of Design. Now, we are, com we are an association of associations, which means um, we are composed of national professional designer associations, design schools, and design promotion agencies, which of course usually are all multidisciplinary. And we are, we are the largest organization in terms of membership of profession, national professional designer organizations. Uh, that's our, our central pillar. And we're very happy that over the decades where we started as primarily Western European, we are now truly international with membership from all continents. It's very important for us to, to deal with that diversity um, because even as we appreciate the cultural differences and richness of all the countries in the world, we also recognize that in terms of professional designing, we share a great deal. Um, designers really are the same everywhere. They face the same problems, they have the same language, and whenever they get together, they immediately uh, share an understanding and a comradeship. Um, I, I became uh, involved in ECOD in the mid-90s, uh, when initially I attended some of the events and then became a representative of my national association and later became elected to the board, the executive board of the organization and, and I have served also as president. So it's been a very great opportunity for me, not only to work with international friends and colleagues uh, on the issues that we're dealing with, but I have been able to learn about design in a way which I would never be able to learn because I've been able to go to many, many, many countries around the world, countries that probably I would not uh, reach uh, in that way uh, from the south to the north to the east to the west. And when visiting these countries, I haven't been a tourist. I've been actually working with with my colleagues, which gives you a different uh, viewpoint and experience in these countries that is very different from the window of a, of a tourist uh, tour bus. So for me, it has been an opportunity to continue my education. It, it's, a very, it's been a very enriching experience and I've learned things that I would never have learned otherwise. So, I'm very thankful for the opportunity of being active and uh, EcoD has provided me to enrich my own um, understanding of design. I think that designers today are facing, um, of course, many challenges, but as we know, challenges open the door to opportunities. Um, I, I think in terms of ECOD, we recognize that the primary challenge facing designers, practicing designers, um, is the question of what it means to be a professional. Uh, the, the term professional is not only a measure of technical capacity, of being able to design. Um, it's more than that. Being a professional 
implies that you have to give a great deal of consideration as to why you are designing. Um, being a professional is different than being a practitioner. For example, um, doctors, physicians, are perhaps the oldest established professional community because they have had the Hippocratic Oath, which deals with ethical questions. So beyond having to know about medical science, you, if you're going to be a medical professional, you have to, you have an ethical code uh, that uh, determines how you act. And that, for example, lawyers are also recognized as professions and they have an obligation not only to their clients but they have an obligation to the law to the court to society and when a profession is recognized by society then those professionals are given not only certain authority and obligations but they also uh, enjoy a certain status uh, now we, we think that designing is so important. It has such an enormous impact on economics and on culture and on social equity and on environmental sustainability. Our impact is so great that designers should, must consider themselves as professionals, which means that they have to be very conscious of their ethical activity. Now, for the past 200 years, under a world that has adopted consumption almost as a religion, designers have found themselves to be the servants of producers who are interested in ever-growing consumption. And I think we all we all are beginning to recognize the limits of consumption because it raises questions of our sustainability on this planet. Uh, and because designers are so critical in those aspects, we think that designers, if if they are going to maintain that they are professionals, have to change their positioning. They have to first recognize themselves as being uh, responsible of having re obligations to, to the general welfare uh, of the planet and, and to the public. So over the, over the past 200 years, designers have very much been the servants of producers, no matter where, no matter where in what country they practice. They, they have been servants of the market. Whereas we think that designers are more appropriately the ambassadors of the end users, which means they are not only uh, responsive to their individual needs, but they are also very much response, they should be very much responsive to general needs, environmental needs, social needs, cultural needs, because our, our impact is very great. So the challenge and the opportunity here is, first of all, that we designers ourselves understand the implications, and that has to be done through, I think, cooperation between the professional communities and the schools, the curriculum, that teach young designers what it means to be a professional designer and through codes of ethics. But of course, it's not enough to generate that understanding amidst designers. We also have to generate that understanding um, in the minds of producers and governments and the general population. So we have a very simple challenge, I think, and that is to change the self-definition of what it means to be a designer, first amongst all the designers in the world, of which there must be some 
20 million, let's say, and then to change the understanding of designer um, amongst the 8 billion people on the planet. So that's our small challenge. I think um, there has never been a better time to be a, a young designer or a design student because um, we, we see that there have never been as many opportunities to design. There's, there's never been so much need and recognition for design, no matter if you're speaking about the visual environment or the material environment uh, or, or the spatial environment or even experiences. Um, because of technology and because of rising standards of living and because of growing populations and growing urban areas, the amount of design that is required is growing exponentially. So there is going to be an ever increasing need for more and more designs and more and more designers. Um, so the, the, the future is very great. Now, um, in addition, the power to design has always, it has, has also increased because of technology. Um, the, the way um, the amount of visual communications has expanded with, uh, with the internet and with the digital world means that the amount of visual designing is growing enormously. It is more tailored to smaller and smaller um, populations and to individuals. The control of materials is, is, is greater and production permits greater variation. Um, so the amount of designing going forward is enormous. So there's a lot to do. Now, the impact is also growing as we see, because we are more interconnected, because we are more quickly interconnected and things that happen in one part of the world are immediately connected to the other part of the world, the influence of designers is also increasing. If we look at social media and we look at the way that the messaging is impacting our lives, not only in good ways and difficult ways, we see that the influence of designers is very great and more and more, I think, um, society and, and producers and uh, communicators and governments are going to be looking to designers to help address the problems, problems of uh, sustainability, problems of pollution, problems of consumption, problems of cultural diversity. We, we designers are the people who very much create uh, stereotypes and the way they make those stereotypes, if they do so with great social and cultural responsibility, will determine um, how diversity is applied and whether we are sensitive to the needs of different cultures and different diverse groups. So the, the role of design becomes uh, very great. Uh, our impact becomes very great. And again, this brings me back to the very great importance of understanding not only how to design, but why we design. Back to questions of professionalism. And I think young designers have to think about this very carefully. I think they have to demand of their teachers and their employers um, to discuss what are the ethical codes and the ethical responsibilities. I think young designers have the capacity to influence their communities uh, so that in the coming decades, the position of designer and the status of being a designer 
changes, as I said earlier, from being servants of producers and amplifiers of consumption to becoming ambassadors of the end users and finding a more rational consumption. Uh, now, you know, very frequently design, we go, we're closing the cycle now because we started talking about definitions of what is design. Sometimes, too often, if something is designed, we think it is a good thing, that all design is good. But that's not true. Um, in fact, good design is not that uh, often uh, present. An excellent design is by definition uh, very rarely present. There's an awful lot of bad design. And I think that designers themselves have to be conscious of not doing bad design, just as there's malpractice amongst doctors, there is maldesigning amongst designers, and which has enormous impact if you take questions of privacy, for example, on the internet. Um, so I think uh, young designers are in a position to contribute and to recognize the discussion about what is good design and what is bad design. And the more designers take positions on this, and the more producers appreciate that good design requires more time and more investment uh, and is to be highly valued. And the more the general public learns to demand good design and recognize bad design, um, the better off the world is going to be and the better off designers are going to be. Um, so I think it's very important uh, and a great opportunity for young designers to think about these things. This idea, these ideas of uh, so-called uh, uh, design thinking and, and, and uh, uh, everybody is a designer, I think that's the antithesis of what pro good professional designing is. If everybody is a designer, then no one is a designer. Is everybody a brain surgeon? We don't want everybody going around and, and doing brain up surgery. Um, there's no doubt that people are involved. Everybody's involved in the design process and designers have to be aware of, um, of what the public needs and there has to be a methodology to involve them. But that doesn't make them designers. Designers are by necessity a small group of highly skilled, highly motivated and ethical um, professionals. And uh, it's very important. It's a challenge for young designers to protect the profession and to build it up. And I think they have an opportunity to do so. Well, I want to thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. And I wish um, you a very successful uh, initial event that you are organizing this year. Um, I look forward uh, in future celebrations to be able to attend what I think is going to be a very special and unique event. So thank you very much and hope to see you soon.